y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden. And today we're gonna to be doing a lot of work on this raised bed and this raised bed. We're gonna start by harvesting some snapdragons. We're gonna be planting in a bunch of new snapdragon seedlings. And then over here, we're gonna do a little bit of a cleanup and we're gonna be planting some of Sunflower Steve's new Van Gogh mix of sunflower seeds. was quite the mouthful in there okay so two raised beds I'm going I'm basically working through each of my raised beds in the backyard these raised beds are from uh, Amazon if they're still available I'll put them in my Amazon storefront link I've had them for multiple years they've held out really well been very very pleased with them and um, they still have many years to time sometimes at some points they besides being a little dirty they look brand new still which is great and so I have a bed of ranunculus right here these are my fall planted ranunculus so I started the corms in mid fall got them planted out by late fall overwintered them outside in this particular bed making sure to um, basically cover them and protect them during severe freezes because ranunculus corms do not like to be um, frozen and they have done beautifully I'm so pleased I'm going to be definitely planting a whole bunch this next fall now this area over here are all my snapdragons these all overwintered beautifully and I think we're going to start by planting in this bed first I have a whole bunch of snapdragon seedlings that are dying to get in the ground and I mean dying they look terrible <laughs> because they need to get in the ground so bad so let's start by going ahead and harvesting some of these snapdragons for some cut flower arrangements Okay, so let's talk, talk snapdragons. It took me a few tries to be successful with snapdragons. I found that in my area, it works best if I start them from seed in um, the fall or actually late winter, plant them out in the fall, and then from there, overwinter them and then start harvesting them in the spring. Um, that's what definitely has worked best for me. This guy, I think it's coastal lavender i'm not sure when harvesting snapdragons you want to cut down to the base of the plant above about two to three sets of leaves um, they are cut and come again and so the more you cut on them the better they're going to do now in my area my snapdragons will stop blooming once we get hit that really hot um, summer weather they don't like prolonged hot weather they can take maybe you hit a spike but then the rest of the day it's you know much cooler truthfully in my area during the hottest parts of the summer it will be um, you know even at nighttime it's 93 degrees <laughs> you know so uh, something that's kind of important these are beautiful um, so snapdragons are really going to produce for me more in this time early spring than they are um, the rest of the year they'll produce till early summer and then they will stop and they may give me a few blooms um, in late fall early winter depending on how hot it was um, during that time because truthfully even um, my falls we have triple degree temps during my fall time as well so I'm going through and I'm harvesting. We have a big um, storm coming through. So a lot of times my snapdragons will flop over during heavy storms. I don't do anything to support them. Um, I probably could. I try just to plant them really close together. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there it just allow them to support each other so I'm about to go in with a whole bunch of seedlings to fill in some places where I've lost um, snapdragons these snapdragons that you see here have been here a couple of years they do act like a perennial in my garden which is pretty fabulous I'll put some photos of the different varieties that I grow and that I enjoy my favorite variety is I think it's silver costa costa silver it's absolutely beautiful and really fun to work with I am gonna um, trimming some of these ones that aren't quite um, opened up on their blooms but they'll open up very quickly once I bring them inside and snapdragons are heliotropic so they're always going to redirect themselves at the Sun so you can see like this some has bent itself because it flopped over 
and then it try to reorient itself towards the sun. Same thing with that one. Not a bad haul. Snapdragons are really fun to grow. They look beautiful in the garden. They're great for harvesting for cut flower arrangements. You just really got to know your area and what's going to work best for your area. I do have videos on growing snapdragons, starting them from seed, moving them out, both starting them in late winter and starting the seeds in fall so that I have both options, but the fall definitely works best for me. Now, with that being said, I still have a bunch of snapdragon seedlings that I did start in the winter that I want to get into this bed. So I do have some areas that where I've got old plants um, that are done. I'm going to pull those out and then I'm going to start tucking in tons of seedlings in here. So I have a bunch of snapdragon seedlings. I already split them all off and sent half of them to Kristen for her garden. And what has happened is as uh, the spring has been gun, begun to hit, my focus has shifted from seedlings and shifted to focusing outside, which is a problem because now my seedlings are suffering. They are underwatered, they are under fertilized, they're in rough shape. <laughs> they need to get into the ground. I am not expecting a ton of blooms from any of these snapdragon seedlings. And you can see it's pale, lighter color means they're malnourished. Um, I'm not expecting blooms from them. I'm really putting these in as filler for next year. I just want to over make sure that these make it through the hot summer and then they'll give me tons of bloom next year. However, they may give me one flush of a bloom from each plant. So I am not going to be pruning these back. Typically you prune them back to make them bushier. I'm not gonna do that because that's gonna set me back about two to three weeks on blooms. And, and that will put us into the hotter part of the beginning of the summer. And that's not gonna work for these. They don't bloom during that time of the year. So basically I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna not cut these back. Um, I am going to just focus on getting them into the ground and then hopefully by not pruning them back they might give me a little bit of a bloom. Now I'm going to start simply with just kind of coming in here with my plant tone in a particular area and then I'm just going to start pulling my seedlings out and while I'm getting these planted up I'll talk about the varieties of seedlings that I'm going to be that I'm putting in here. But I think that I'm going to be planting them pretty close, about four to six inches apart. Like I said, I don't really like to um, put, I don't put anything in to support these. So I just try to plant them really close to one another. And that helps a ton with supporting them. Okay, so the light salmon chantilly is absolutely gorgeous. Um, beautiful warm colors, tall strong stems, delicate ruffled blooms, and a touch of a citrus scent in my opinion. About 36 to 48 inches tall requires full sun. And like all my other snapdragons, I do utilize this as a hardy annual or a cool flower in my garden. Now for the Chantilly White, I think this is a big producer in my garden. It produces tons and tons and tons of stems, so I really love it. They're kind of like single blooms and they're just really frilly and lovely looking. About 36 to 40 inches tall, full sun. I think that these are more of a pure white than some of the other white snapdragons that I have seen. Okay, for the Madame Butterfly Bronze, this is a really nice, deep, saturated color with double blooms, as you can kind of see by the photos. So extremely frilly, 
long lasting blooms about 30 to 36 inches taller so it's a little bit shorter and then it does have its um, sister flower which is the Madame Butterfly Bronze with White which is a little bit more of a salmon-y color um, a little bit lighter I actually prefer the bronze with white over just the bronze I think the bronze with white has a lot more peach um, peachy tones salmon tones to it whereas the bronze has a little bit more of like a pink cherry tone both of them are absolutely beautiful and I absolutely love the double blooms now for the Madame Butterfly Ivory definitely has a more of a yellow tone to it than something like um, the Chantilly white but I like the yellow tone I think it's absolutely lovely these are double bloomed very very frilly um, and they do tend to be around the 30 to 36 inch mark but they can get taller up to 48 I've never experienced them at 48 inches Okay, so Costa Summer Lavender is actually one of my newer favorites. It definitely has more of a purple tone than you might see in these photos, but it is described as a smoky mauve pink color. It's more of an old-fashioned Snapdragon, which I actually love the old-fashioned uh, Snapdragons with kind of that hinged look. This is about 30 to 36 inches tall. And then wrapping up with the Costa Apricot, mine tend to be more of a creamy color with just some bursts of the apricot, like this current photo, rather than darker. Um, I still love them. I think they have a lot of yellow, a lot more yellow than you would think in them, but they're absolutely beautiful. They're about 30 to 36 inches tall, and just like all the other Snapdragons, they require full sun. Over here is a bunch of my lisianthus, which are perennial for me. So I am a, I started them, I started a batch from seed a couple of years ago, and then this is a new batch from seed that I started last fall, and I just keep filling in the space. My snapdragons keep reseeding themselves, which is wonderful. But in the summer is a really great time the lisianthus start growing like crazy. So we'll put the last of Snapdragons slightly mixed in with Lysianthus. Okay, now I did want to point out that these beds get full sun all day long and um, they are um, they're behind my house so they face south that's why they get sun all day long and um, they do have drip irrigation set up to them which makes that process of keeping them alive during you know 60 plus days of triple degree weather uh, makes it better it makes it easier to keep them alive during that time from what i understand uh, ranunculus are not cut and come again that's not been my particular experience I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of the spent blooms but I'm not saving any of these for cut flowers I'm just gonna leave these um, on the plants for all of the bees to enjoy so I'm just gonna cut off the ones that are really spent and I'm also gonna come in here Looks like I need to pull up the Christmas lights. Okay, so definitely have some weeds in here. Pull some of those up, clean that up a little bit. I have a couple of scabiosa plants right here that have overwintered themselves, um, which is fabulous right here. So I'm actually gonna add a few more scabiosa plants right here. The varieties I'm gonna be adding are salmon rose, I think they're all three salmon rows and um, they definitely work as um, hardy annuals or cool flowers in my area and I started all of these from seed inside so I'm gonna make sure that I add some plant tone to each one and get these plants tucked in 
Okay, for the Salmon Rose Scabiosa, these are a coral salmon pink color and are perfect for a cutting garden. They're approximately 32 inches tall with strong wiry stems and fully double heads. Um, just amazing in arrangements. They need full sun. They are considered an annual. However, they quite frequently overwinter for me and I really utilize them as a hardy annual. All right. Got those all tucked in. Now let's talk about these ranunculus again for a little bit. So I need to make a decision. Typically what I do is once all the leaves of the ranunculus start to yellow and die back, I pull up all the corms, <coughs> which is fine. That worked great for me. And then I basically reconstituted them um, in the fall and then that got them planted out here. It worked fine. But I also need to make a decision. Do I want to just maybe try leaving them in to see what happens? Um, they die back during the hottest part of the year, which is fine. The biggest thing with ranunculus corms is rotting. So um, I have drip lines in here and, you know, it does get watered pretty frequently. So rotting is the main issue uh, regarding it. So you guys let me know what your thoughts are regarding the ranunculus. If I should pull the corms like I have in the past or if I should leave them in. But right now, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to start planting some sunflower seeds. Okay, so in the fall, when Sunflower Steve put his sunflower seeds, you can pre-order them online. I ordered some. I ordered the Van Gogh's Fantasy Mix, um, which is contains an amazing mix of truly unique flowers. Colors may range from orange, lemon, gold, amber, burgundy, pinkish, auburn, copper, red, and any combination in between. They may be solid or multicolor. They may be doubles, semi-doubles, singles. They are truly a one-of-a-kind mix that has a multitude of beautiful traits for your visual um, pleasure. And so basically they take about 7 to 14 days to germinate. We're planting it about a half an inch deep. And it's about 25 seeds per packet. They were very pricey. I, forget, I think it was like $15. I'll put the price below. I ordered two packs, one for myself and one for one of y'all. So if you are interested in winning the Sunflower Steve's um, Sunflower Seed Packet uh, that I'll send to you, make sure you drop me a comment below letting me know your thoughts on the ranunculus. Should I pull them for the fall or should I just leave them in and see what happens? You guys let me know. And then this is going to be um, in about a week. I'll post the winner. I usually post the winner inside my video. So you have to watch the videos to see who the winner is. It needs to be somebody in the U.S. that I can easily mail these to. All right, y'all, let's get started on these seeds. So I'm going to start just by putting some plant tone around the space. I mean, I put a lot of um, compost and fertilizer in here when I planted the ranunculus, but you know, the ranunculus has been growing here for a while. So they probably zapped a lot of that nutrients. All right. And then I'm just going to go in, I'm going to use my hands to kind of rough up some of the soil. You know how soil, when it kind of bakes in the heat, it kind of gets like a crust on it. So just loosening up that crust, so it's easier for me to get some seeds in here. I see a bunch of celosia trying to come up already. <laughs> oh. I can't believe it's already warm enough for celosia to be germinating. So I'm not super worried about getting all these sunflower seeds watered in since especially we have storms coming today. I mean, the humidity right now is ridiculous. I am literally dripping. But I do want to get these new seedlings watered in. Okay. Looking good. Got all the Van Gogh fantasy mix from Sunflower Steve planted up in this bed right here. So I'll be fun watching them come up. And if there are some that I really love, I'll let them go, let them go to seed and then I'll collect those sunflower seeds for next year. 
we um, planted some of the um, salmon scabiosa right there that I grew from seed. And then we tucked in about 30 additional snapdragon seedlings in some of the bare spots throughout this garden. We did not prune them back because it's a little too late to prune them back and hope for more blooms so quickly because they are needing to establish a root system. So by leaving them long, I might get a bloom off of them before it gets too hot. All right, you all, another round of seedlings planted in Zaguba Garden, along with some direct sowing of sunflower seeds. I'm excited. This is starting to come together, starting to fill out. Harvested some beautiful snapdragons as well. A bunch of these snapdragons will actually be ready to harvest in the next day or so as well. This um, ranunculus, I'm just gonna let them go ahead and finish off their blooming, and then I'll cut them back, and then I'll decide if I'm gonna dig them up or just leave them in until next year. All right, y'all, hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you drop a comment below if you are interested in winning the Sunflower Steve's Sunflower Seeds. Let me know whether you think I should dig the ranunculus up once they die back, or if you, I th you think I should leave them in year round. Also, make sure you like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment helps grow the channel. And be sure to check me out on my social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.